Okay, welcome back to the channel. It's that time of year again. It's the time for Tesla to surprise us, to delight us with their holiday update. Now, if you don't know, Tesla has every year surprised and delighted us with a big software update to all vehicles. And this usually includes some of the most anticipated, the most in-demand requests, and the same is gonna go with this year. 2025, December, this month, we expect the software update to come out and it's been confirmed by Tesla for the first time actually presenting us with all of the notes, all of the release notes for this holiday update. So we're gonna get into everything to expect in the holiday update for this year coming this month, December, 2025. Let's get into it. Remember, if you're new here and you haven't already and you like the content, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Now, let's get started with the first big update in this holiday release is the Tesla app to be on Apple Watch. So for the longest time, the only way to access your vehicle was via your phone or a key card. Well, what if your phone dies? What if you don't have your key card? It's been you haven't been able to access your car. Now, third-party apps have made it available to access your car and they've worked, but finally, for the first time, Tesla's gonna be making a native Apple Watch app. That means your Apple Watch, should you have one, will be able to lock and unlock your vehicle and be able to access things like the frunk and the trunk and, uh, and so forth. But it will also act as a key. So if you decide to not carry your phone with you and just have your Apple Watch, you will be able to get in your car and drive and just go. This has been a very sought after, very highly requested uh, feature, and I'm glad that they're finally bringing it. Update number two revolves around sentry mode. Now, for those of you who can date all the way back, I remember my car did not have any sort of dash cam. The whole concept sentry mode was birthed through a software update. Your car automatically gained the ability to uh, have a free dash cam over the air and that has continued to evolve and develop. That dash cam was uh, able to uh, initially detect a break-in, sound the alarms, um, but then it became updated to alert you on your phone um, and give you more details there. But now that's gonna be further enhanced with the ability to not only alert you, not only capture content, but now if something should happen, be it an accident or a break-in, you don't have to remove the USB drive, take it to a computer, download the clip, share it. Now you'll be able to get that clip and access that clip directly on your smartphone. So that has been a very highly requested uh, feature, and that's coming in this December update. Okay, third software update is Cirrus Satellite Radio. Well, those of you, the few of you, or however many of you are left still listening to Satellite Radio, will now be able to access that in your Tesla. A long, long time ago, Tesla's had the built-in satellite radio antenna. Well, fast forward to the future, satellite radio doesn't need the antenna anymore, it can be streamed over the air. And so now that Cirrus Satellite app will be available in your car. And not only that, but I heard that they're gonna be giving people three months free subscription uh, to the app when this software update goes out. So if you're new to Satellite Radio, you wanna check it out, you'll be able to have three free months to check it out. I think this is a great move on uh, Cirrus Satellite just to basically, you know, maybe be able to uh, gain some new customers uh, to their subscription service. I know Howard Stern's still on there. So those of you that are super into Satellite Radio, surprise and delight, Tesla's bringing it to your Tesla this December. The next one is setting your arrival at your destination. Now, for those of you that have road tripped in your Tesla, you know that uh, road tripping is amazing. It tells you where to stop, how much to charge for, but it doesn't necessarily plan for how much you'll arrive at your destination with. It just makes sure that you're not ending at zero. Don't know about you, but I have traveled where at my destination, I wasn't charging. I wasn't using my car. My car sat for four or five days. And that meant when I was time to road trip back home, I wasn't starting at 100% state of charge, which made it a little bit difficult. Now, Tesla's gonna be enabling in the car the ability to say, hey, when I get to my destination, I wanna get there at 100% state of charge or 90% state of charge. That way, I know, hey, I'm not using my car or I don't have a charging capability 
at that site. I wanna get there with a higher state of charge. So five days later when I leave, I still have a higher state of charge than a lower state of charge and having to find a charger right at the beginning of your road trip. I think this is a really important um, and a really helpful update um, that'll be coming this month. The next is being able to search along your route with uh, detour times. So uh, let's say I'm heading down south, I'm down the five and I'm heading down to SoCal, but I have a craving or I want to stop at Best Buy. Show me the Best Buy in the route that I'm going on, but then also change my uh, update in my maps to encompass that detour to go to Best Buy. That's gonna be coming to the update uh, this month as well. And I think that's a really nice feature. It's all about accurate range prediction, um, encompassing uh, weather and detours and stops and routes and waypoints. We recently got waypoints, uh, which took a long time. So this is just an added enhancement to that. Now, speaking of weather, precipitation map and weather at your destination is gonna be coming in this update as well. That's huge because we just got um, weather in our car recently. And that's great, but I'm in the car. Why do I need to know the weather of, I can just look out the window and tell you the weather. But now you'll be able to see the weather at your destination. So for example, I'm in the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area. I know the weather where it is when I'm getting in my car, but if I'm driving down to SoCal, I wanna know what's the weather gonna be like there when I get there? Um, what am I expecting? So this is a really nice update that'll be coming as well in this December holiday update. Now, the next one is a really big, really important, really safety focused one is rear cross traffic detection. What this means is previously, and in many cars today that have the ultrasonic sensors, the sensors wrap around the back bumper. They're able to tell oncoming uh, perpendicular traffic, whether that be a kid on a bike, whether that be a car. Sometimes very hard to see in your rear camera um, if something is coming this way towards you as you're backing up. In fact, in my latest Cadillac Lyric video, they had this. Not only did it beep and tell you, but the seat vibrated from which side they're coming in. Well, Tesla is standing behind their vision-based only uh, system, and they will now be enabling that through vision, uh, the ability to detect cross traffic. I'm super excited about this. This is a really big safety feature. Um, I think it'll come in handy. Um, I think it's in a lot of other vehicles. So for it not to be in a Tesla in 2024 is a shocker. So I'm glad that this is coming in this holiday update. It's one of the few that I've been touting about and talking about and hoping that they release and they're finally doing it. Super happy about this. Okay, now a couple updates for Cybertruck owners. You'll now be able to customize your Cybertruck in the app on the screen as well as your uh, license plate. So just some really cool customizations on screen to give your Cybertruck that rad cool look that you may have. The, I think they've really acknowledged that people are going crazy with their wraps, um, but why not being able to give them that very unique look right on the screen of your vehicle to more accurately depict what your Cybertruck looks like. So excited for Cybertruck owners. Uh, Cybertruck owners will also be seeing enhancement to their rear view camera. Now, a lot of Cybertruck owners complained about the rear view mirror. It's really dinky, it's really small, throw it out the window. Um, ideally, you're seeing your rear view camera through the camera, so right on the touch screen. But that camera was really small. So I'm thinking that these enhancements are gonna make that, that video feed a little bit bigger, a little bit more prominent, um, so that people uh, are using it more. Um, and so, that's, I, if Cybertruck owners, sound off in the comments down below. Are you excited about this feature? Because if I was a Cybertruck owner, this one would be exciting because it's just hard to see. Once you close that tonneau cover, forget about rear view. Now, again, with the Cybertruck theme, we're gonna be seeing um, rear arcade. So people in the back, they'll be able to run the arcade right on the touch screen on the back. Um, as well as uh, for the longest time, this Santa mode that was present in all Teslas featured a old Model S as Santa sleigh. Well, Santa sleigh is getting an up upgrade. It's getting a Cybertruck sleigh. So that's super exciting as well. Now we're also gonna be seeing some improvements and enhancements to TuneIn. So those of you who use uh, TuneIn in the car, it is a app. Uh, it is an app that I previously used to listen to podcasts before Apple Podcasts launched. Um, but you can see just like 
apps are coming slowly, not really an app store, but anyway, TuneIn has been there since the get-go. It looks like it's getting a whole overhaul, a whole enhancement. So those of you who are big TuneIn users will see an enhancement to the app, um, and I think a much needed upgrade and refresh. Now, we're also seeing a, a scheduling light show. Uh, previously, light show used to be enabled right from the center console, the, the screen. Um, then you were able to set the light show, uh, set it that I want it to begin in five minutes, exit your car, and then let it begin automatically um, when you wanted to. But now you're going to be able to set that right from your phone, from the Tesla app. So that way it's even more remote um, ability to start a light show, which I've seen some really, really cool light shows now that you can customize your own light show. Now in the gaming department, there is a new game coming called Boomerang Foo. I'm excited about this one. Uh, any new game, any games that are like quick and easy. I'm not so much a big, big gamer in car. I want stuff that are light, kid-friendly, uh, quick, easy to play. Um, and this looks like one of them. So excited to see a new game uh, in your car. Now, we all know the Tesla as the vehicle that birthed the car fart. And continuing on the theme of farting, um, you know, every seat in the car has an occupancy sensor built into it. That's what lets the car know that, hey, someone's there, but the seatbelt's not on. That's why you see the door, the, the seatbelt chime come on. Well, going with that sensor, it will now be able to tell when someone sits in that seat and initiate, should you want, a fart. So someone sits in the back seat, a fart will come down as soon as they sit. It's called fart on contact, and that's coming to your Tesla soon, so all you pranksters are gonna love this one. Now, another feature that I have wanted and appreciate is uh, I have car seats in the back. Uh, so the more room they have, the better, but sometimes I have a large passenger that needs more room that will push the seat back. Now, the next time that I jump on my car and my child is getting into the back seat, they need more room. How do I move that passenger seat up without breaking my back and hyperextending my arm to reach around to move that seat forward? Well, you'll soon be able to move your passenger seat right from the touchscreen, right from the driver's side touchscreen, be able to move that seat and configure it such that you, you know, make room for people in the back. That is a really cool enhancement. Now, rear screen remote. Now, this one was interesting. It says it allows for remote viewing of videos while the car is in drive in the rear screen. I thought that could always be done, but maybe I'm missing something here. Let me know down in the comments what you think this means, um, because I thought rear passengers could always watch content like YouTube and whatnot on the rear screen while the car was in drive. So I don't know exactly what this means, but I would imagine it's, it's something great, right? Uh, there's also going to be a maintenance summary. Don't quite know what this means, but I'm hoping that it's going to uh, enable you to log, hey, when I rotated my tires, uh, what maintenance you've done on your vehicle. Now, we know electric vehicles don't really require that much maintenance, so don't really know exactly what this would mean, but excited to see what it could have in it. Okay, next is find nearby parking. I'm thinking this is uh, like if I was going to the city, um, it's going to help me identify and find local parking garages or lots near where I'm going to help me with parking and where I can park. Um, I'm hoping that this will also show you share pricing and so forth. Um, this will be really handy. Another safety feature is the ability to reduce the sound, your audio uh, of your music when shifting into reverse. Uh, thus, you can focus and concentrate on your screen, on your video feed, as well as the chimes that are going to come in from cross traffic. So I'm all about safety. If it increases safety and awareness, I'm all for it. Great work with that one. Uh, the next one is navigating automatically around road closures. Um, I think it does an okay job with road closures today, um, but I think this is more taking the feed of data that it's getting maybe from Google on road closures and then feeding that into full self-driving to enable it to navigate around that. This is a great enhancement. Um, again, back to sentry mode, another enhancement that's gonna come is the ability to detect whenever a door handle is pulled. So that's actually kind of crazy. Not necessarily someone's trying to break into your vehicle, but if they just pull on your door handle, you'll get an alert. I wanna know that, like, why are you pulling on my door handle? Don't, don't touch my car, why are you touching my car? So, uh, cool to know that, I mean, it might make me more paranoid, it might, you know, click it on your phone and try to see the video feed and whatnot, um, but either way, hey, the more enhancements, the more you can deliver, like my car from 2018 to 2024 is drastically different. Most of these features are enhancements to features that didn't even exist when I bought my car in 2018, I, I love, 
all these updates and they're free and they're over the air. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Model S, X, and Cybertruck are getting this energy app consumption page now built in uh, into their vehicles. So that's cool. Um, vehicles without premium connectivity. Remember, they only premium connectivity used to get traffic and navigation, but what they're saying is that on the latest update, that even if you don't have premium connectivity, you're gonna still see navigation and traffic, which is which is awesome. I mean, I thought that was just a premium feature, but hey, for all you non-premium subscribing folk out there, this is an awesome add-on for you guys. Don't have to pay for anything. Now you get to see traffic. Now you get to get navigation. Now your navigation knows to route you in the better route to avoid traffic. Now the last update is when you arrive at a supercharger letting you know which stalls are out of order. Today, when you actually click on a supercharger, it'll tell you then, but you're not at that supercharger yet. So when you get there, you have to click on that supercharger again to see which stalls are out of order. Well, now it looks like that will actually pop up when you get to your supercharger. So you know immediately, don't pull into stalls A and C because those are out of order. I mean, I hardly see stalls out of order, but this is handy. Just another UI enhancement and improvement as to how you're getting your data. Listen, whatever it is, Tesla is taking their vehicles and making them better giving them more features, capabilities, and abilities, all for free, all over the air. My car in 2018, majority of these features had none of them. And in 2024 has all of them, it continues to be updated. My car is not a legacy yet, <laughs> um, and still gets all these updates that I'm able to use. Now there is no specifications whether any of these updates will be only for certain models or not. I'm assuming that they'll apply to the entire fleet, but we'll soon find out upon the delivery of the December holiday Tesla vehicle update. I'm curious, what's your favorite update that's coming to your vehicle? Leave them down in the comments down below. What do you think about this holiday update? This is, I think, one of the best outside of like, man, when they delivered Century Mode for the first time, that was a game changer, especially here in the Bay Area with all the break-ins. What are you most excited for? And do you think Tesla nailed it? I think the Tesla software team was cooking this holiday season because they really, really executed. Not only did they execute, but they communicated all their updates without you having to leak stuff. They were just like, hey, listen, here's what you're gonna get this month. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. Here's what you're gonna get, enjoy your vehicles. And I love that they did that. I love all of the updates that they did. It tells me that they're listening to their users, their owners, and that they're delivering. And they've been doing that since the beginning. So yeah, that's been it. That's the holiday update coming out this month. Um, again, if you haven't already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and like the video. And I'll catch you guys next time. Can't wait for this update. See ya.